<laughs> I love you. First into the den are Honduran, Wilma Carcamo, and his English wife, Ellie. So well, we met in the Cayman Islands where we work and live, and we managed to meet by salsa dancing. Five, six, seven, eight, one. It was only a matter of time before you started dancing. <laughs> the couple might have some smooth moves, but can their business earn a perfect ten from Britain's toughest judges? Hello Dragons, we're Ellie and Wilma Carcamo of Caribe Coffee Company. We're here today to ask for £30,000 cash investment for a 10% equity share in our business. Caribe Coffee Company launched in September 2018. We are direct importers of specialty green coffee beans from Honduras, Central America. We store, roast, package and distribute. We're 100% online, 80% retail, 20% wholesale. You might be thinking, another coffee company, but what makes us different is the connections and relationship with the farmers that we have. I'm from Honduras, and I know firsthand the reality of the coffee industry in developing countries. Too often, big corporates take their share directly from the hands of the farmers. Caribe Coffee Company is passionate about ensuring the farmers receive a fair price. We stand for quality, but also sustainability, which means using environmentally sustainable farming practices such as removing the use of agricultural chemicals and encouraging biodiversity in the forests. It's an excellent cup of coffee that doesn't cost the earth. We do have some coffee samples to organise for you and then we'd welcome any questions after that. Ethically sourced, sustainably farmed ground coffee is the proposition from Wilma and Ellie Karkamo. Right, I will start. Who are seeking £30,000. Do I take these first two? Yeah, the yeah, first two, yeah. In exchange for a 10% stake in their company. It smells amazing. I'm just going to have a sip before I ask you the questions. Yes. While Tuka Suleiman may be in need of a caffeine hit to get him going, the entrepreneurs themselves are already full of beans. You're both very enthusiastic. And that's a good start. Thank you. Tell me about yourselves. Um, well, obviously, Wilma's from Honduras, so he's been surrounded by coffee all of his life. His granny was a coffee farmer. We met in the Cayman Islands in 2014, moved back to the UK in 2017. Wilma was, let's say, a little bit disappointed by some of the coffee that he came across. So are you saying our coffee's not good? You had to make your own? Yeah. That's pretty much exactly That's pretty what much. said. I wouldn't overly disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, Wilma's quite entrepreneurial. I love business and we just thought, let's do this. So give us a history on numbers. It, this year we did 20,000. 2019 oh, right. we turned over 32,000. 2020 we turned over just over 36,000. We forecast 50,000 turnover at the end of this year with a gross profit of 35,000 and a small profit of 5,000. So this is what I call a nice small business so far. So tell me the vision. We want to be a national company for sure. We both work incredibly hard and, and that's what we're definitely focused on doing. There are obviously other online coffee companies that are turning over millions and we want to be one of them. News of growing sales and ambitious plans for the future have got Wilma and Ellie off to an encouraging start. But Deborah Meaden is keen to get to grips with the granular details of the business. How many different types of coffees do you offer? So at the moment we have eight different types of coffee. Our best seller is Copan, um, and it is Copan. Yeah. yeah. I had a wonderful day in Copan. I did read that you liked some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, honestly, I travelled down through uh, San Pedro Sula down to the Bay Islands. Oh, just wonderful. Amazing. So oh. yeah, that accounts for fifty-four percent of our sales this year. And the other side of the business, which is the wholesale business, what's the opportunity in that? Who are you selling to at the moment? At the moment, mainly uh, restaurants and small cafes. The visions for that go to grow the same customer base, but also supply other small roasteries. The smaller roasteries, I think, are really prime at the moment, because yeah. they're always looking for new product, aren't they? Yeah. And that is, I've got to tell you, that coffee is lovely. Oh. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
a big thumbs up on taste from a well-travelled Deborah Meaden. Now, Peter Jones wants to find out more about how Wilma and Ellie devised their unusual moniker. Where did you come up with the name, the brand? It means Caribbean in Spanish, because Honduras and where we met it was in the Caribbean. And what's your plans to get this well known? Because we know that the market is full yeah. of, and the graveyard is full of coffee beans. Yeah. So what's your plan here? Well, I mean, we're already doing it. We won a national award 2020. We're incredibly focused at getting out there. Now I can see the awards that you've yeah. won over the last two years. It's been fantastic. Yeah. And then you told me your sales numbers. And I went, yeah. oh. For a small business, take a little bit of time to build that trust to a customer base. So we're trying to build our name and through social media campaigns to introduce the farmers, to tell them that it's more than just coffee. So I have videos about me talking with the farmers, introducing who they are, what they do. Those videos on social yeah. media won't do very well. The, the numbers are basically going to be a big view number, zero engagement, zero click through. So how do we get from where you are now to making millions from this in a sentence? Building our brand, keep, keep pushing what we're doing because we're seeing an increase. So the answer is building our brand. Building our, our and brand. And the key USP of this brand versus all of the other thousands of coffee companies in the world is... Sustainability. There's no other sustainable coffee company. Well... It's more, it's more about us, the farmers as well, because most of the coffee company, they put a picture in the, in the website, but they not tell the story. You, you will see, you know, a mother carry the child saying, buy sustainable. That's not sustainable because coming from Honduras, I know that mom has been working there over 10 hours with that child. None of that is communicated on here, right? The, the subtitle here is great beans, great coffee. And on the back it says, this tastes great. Because everything is on our website and the social media, we have a lot of content a, on it. We have a wee bit of a story on there that obviously says that you're supporting okay. uh, family farms. But point taken, for sure. I'm just not sure if it's enough to penetrate a very saturated market. Marketing maestro Stephen Bartlett is concerned that guaranteeing a fair deal for farmers will be insufficient to drive sales. But could this couple's powerful sense of conviction be enough to win over the dragons? Ellie and Wilma, love your passion. But I can't put Wilma and his passion on, on every bag of coffee. <laughs> and I'm sitting here and saying, is there a business going forward that I could make a profit out of? And, and I think it is the small business for you. So on that basis, I'm not going to invest them out. A blow for the coffee entrepreneurs as Tuka Suleiman goes cold on the deal. Will Stephen Bartlett be any more willing to plunge big bucks into brews? Tuka said, we can't put you and your passion on every bag, but in fact, I think that is the marketing strategy. I think you building your personal brand will be the biggest driver of this business. However, there's a scientific approach to that alone. It's a lot of work. But when I look at the potential return as an investor, it's hard to see me ever getting my money back. So for that reason, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to say that I'm out. Do you know, I was sitting here thinking about my trip through Honduras, my heart absolutely would want to invest in you. But I, I struggle to find your hook. You know, it, without you standing here presenting this and showing the passion, that makes it really hard for you to penetrate a market. I don't think you've yet established your reason to be. Find it, please find it. But I, it's just not an investment right now, I'm afraid, so I'm out. Guys, I'm looking at this and thinking, do you know what? You've got a canny little business. Yeah. Doesn't have to be huge and monumental to be successful in something that you're going to love. So I actually don't think it's the right thing for you to have investment. So I'm going to wish you all the best, but I won't be investing today. I'm out. 
four dragons have now bowed out. Only Peter Jones remains. And in an already crowded market, he's also concerned that Wilma and Ellie could be doing more to stand out from the competition. Guys, I think the biggest sticking point is, is clearly the brand. The first question I ask is, where does the name come from? And when I've got to do that for any business, it's, it's really difficult. Why are you not calling yourself, say, the Green Farmer or the Honduras Farmer? Wilmers. Wilmers, I mean, exactly. Why are you not saying Wilmers Coffee Company? Because I, wa I was nobody in the UK. Nobody know Wilmer. But not putting your name on the brand because they don't know you, but putting a name that's difficult to pronounce on your brand instead is weird. Wilmer is not easy to pronounce either, so <laughs> you can imagine. Everybody it, knows Wilmer. <laughs> we watch the Flintstones. Wilmer! <laughs> Come on, Wil <laughs> Wilma is a cracking name. <laughs> I do think the coffee is really nice. So the question directly then is, are you happy to immediately change your brand to Wilma's Coffee? Yeah, everything is on the table and everything can be changed. In that case, I'm going to make you an offer. OK. I'm going to offer you all of the money for 25% of the business. Can we have a shot with the wall? Yes. <laughs> and Ellie. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Their openness to a potential rebrand has resulted in an offer for Wilma and Ellie, albeit at more than double the 10% equity they were originally looking to give away. Mm -hmm. Can we say 12? No. Drop it hard. The stakes are sky high. How the pair handle the next few minutes could determine the entire future of their business. Thank you for your offer, Peter. Um, I would like to counter offer your, your proposal. I would like to offer you 15% of the company for 30,000. 30, now, do you know what? I think what I bring to the party to help you will be huge for this business. So my offer stands the same. 25% for 30,000. I'm a stronger believer at what I have done so far in my life. We have put everything to this. You know, 20% will be the highest, you know, for the best man. I'm going to have to decline. I have to decline. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for your offer. Oh, no. <laughs> I wish you every success. Thank you so much. Obviously, I'm, I'm out. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Sadly for Wilma and Ellie, they must leave the den without having struck a deal. Although they won't be departing entirely empty-handed. I love you. While a failure to agree terms with Peter Jones could mean their coffee business isn't destined for instant success, this Anglo-Honduran couple remain the perfect blend. Sorry. Mm. How have you feel okay? Yeah. We really appreciate that he makes us an offer. Yeah. But we need to stay in our grounds and, you know, value ourselves and the hard work that we have done. Yeah.